There are many ways to win in a strategy game. You can outmicro your opponent by controlling your units in a superior way to incur an advantage that way. You can outmacro your opponent using your economy and superior number of unit producing facilities to outproduce your opponent, have more units than them, and beat them that way. There are, however, different ways to win than just those two core concepts that get talked about all the time, macro and micro. Sometimes you can win by outthinking your opponent, hiding information that's important and displaying certain information to your opponent that it seems as though is crucial for them to know from their point of view, but in truth is really just something you want them to know. Now, if you're new to StarCraft, and when I say new, I don't just mean got the game out of the box. But, you know, if you're bronze or gold or silver, you might be kind of struggling to figure out how to win. Every ladder game you get into might be kind of like, oh, well, I, I kind of know what I'm supposed to do and I might have a rough idea about what I'm kind of going for and what composition. But in terms of the strategy itself in StarCraft, I don't really know like what I should be going for, and that's fine. And I think that if you watch this video, it will be beneficial to helping you understand at least the, a little bit of the thought process that goes into the game. Because whenever you're brand new to a strategy game, you don't really think like a high-level player would, obviously. Like, oh, I scouted this so I'm making this deduction and that will mean that I'm going to make this reaction afterwards. No, no, no. When you're new to the game, even if you know that you're supposed to scout, you might not know what to scout for. So this video will be helpful for those kind of players because, in essence, this is going to be a detailed sort of explanation on how people react in terms, at least in this specific video, Protoss versus Terran. And just to be clear, this is my opponent in the bottom right that we're watching the first person VOD of, the Protoss player, and I am the Terran in the top left. The reason that we are watching from my opponent's POV is since this is a tutorial on vision and a commentary about the power of vision, showing your opponent information and deceiving them, we want to watch from my opponent's point of view. And of course I've kept the I've kept the income tab up in a static way. Because if I had the production tab up and we were omniscient as though we were viewing the replay the normally. Shall persevere. It would defeat the purpose of doing this. So what do we see so far? My Protoss opponent has scouted me. Now he's done a very early probe, not a very early probe scout, but he's done an early probe scout, an early enough probe scout to ensure that he's going to be able to get in the base. Now the problem with this, with scouting this early, is yeah, you're going to get in the base, but you might not see the tech of choice. So you might not see if it's Fast Factory Mind Drop. You might not see if it's some sort of multiple barracks. You might not see if it's CC first. Well, no, you, you would see if it's CC first, but if it's a barracks build, you wouldn't see the follow-up necessarily if the player went to the trouble to tech to Reaper or Marine to eliminate your scout. So the big thing that he did see was double gas. That's usually indicative of some sort of tech build. So right away, he goes ahead and builds the Adept. Now this is obviously meant to scout, and the Adept is a wonderful scouting unit. So what does he see there? After he goes for the probe scout, sees double gas, that kind of means, okay, he's probably going for tech, he's delaying his expansion, because if you want to get an expansion quickly, you don't take that second gas, so you can incur the extra mineral income early. So my Protoss opponent says, okay, he's gone double gas, I'm going to go for an adept to see what he's going for, and then he sees a starport with a tech lab. And anytime you see a starport with a tech lab, that almost always means Banshee. Ever since 2010, in the very beginning of StarCraft II, Tech Lab with Starport has just screamed Banshee. Even if you don't see something researching on the Tech Lab very frequently, it just means, oh well, you know, the player hasn't started the research yet. So, it's not very, like, what else are you gonna, people aren't gonna make medevacs or vikings or liberators from a reactor or a Tech Lab Starport. So at this point, our Protoss player, let's just see what he has. He's done a very standard build that is pretty damn strong, and he actually sees some stuff coming on the map, just a handful of marines. So he's about to be pressured a little bit, but it's five marines, no combat shield, and they look pretty weak. 
and this adept that he used to scout is going to see it. So, in just a game that's lasted about 4 minutes and 45 seconds, the Protoss player has scouted twice, and he's seen what looks to be a Banshee build. That's a starport with a tech lab, almost always indicative of Banshee, and of course the barracks was swapped over and does not have an add-on on it, which is also indicative of Banshee play, because very frequently with Banshee, especially in uh, TVZ, we'll see how the barracks will just be used to make add-ons. So everything about this, whether it be the double gas that he saw with the probe, or the starport with the tech lab, screams Banshee. So what is the response? He has an observer at each base, right? Okay, this one's this one's just finished and it's about to go to the natural. So he has three stalkers at the natural, the mothership core with beautiful pylon spread and an observer in the main. He's teching into upgrades and he has the robotics of course, which will give him detection, much more reliable detection than an oracle. And he has a ton of probes. So in this sense, for our Protoss player, it looks as though from his perspective, okay, the Terran player is just doing some sort of weird Banshee play. Maybe it's like a two-port Banshee, but he has detection. He has units set up at each mineral line to be defensive. And we're going to play the VOD and see what happens. So, of course, the five Marines are coming out. He saw that with the Watchtower, but... Banshee plays are all about the mineral line. You never really see, unless, of course, he would have scouted like a factory in the base building tanks. You don't really see Banshees used with forward pushes very much. Really, the only time you do see that is like a 1 1 1. And because of the lack of factory making tanks here, he can kind of eliminate the possibility of 1 1 1. Now, we see here another counter to Banshee double cannon. To make you a cannon up top, there's a ton of airspace over here. It's a very common place to get dropped and harassed. And he's making a cannon back here, and there's so little airspace directly behind the mineral line that a banshee can't really fly back. Like, the banshee couldn't fly over here and then skirt around and try to fly southbound into the main because there's not enough room. And th that's why this cannon is so good. And it also means that this cannon would prevent the banshee from sitting back here and picking off pylons. And of course the Observer Mothership Core combo just shits on Banshees. He has like the Holy, it wouldn't even be the Holy Trinity because there's four pylons, but he has a beautiful, beautiful little square here, trapezoid as it were of defense. So it looks as though, oops, it looks as though he is beautifully, little sneak peek there, it looks as though he's beautifully, beautifully positioned to defend the Banshee. So the two cannons go up in a bunker. Oh, shit. Okay, so now we flop over to everyone. And let's see what happened here. Because this is basically game-endingly bad for the Protoss. What happened? Well, there was a proxy. A proxy factory that had a reactor on it, has made cyclones. And what we thought was a Banshee opener is actually five cyclones with a handful of marines and a raven. So why is this so brutal to deal with this Protoss? You know, we scouted these on one base. He's doing a gas build of some sort. Well, the reason is, is because the response for Banshees is to defend your mineral line and to spread out your defense. But the counter to a Cyclone one base push mix of units. And the thing is, is there are a lot of different variations of this one, one, one mix of units off of one base all in. So there's, Husky Starcraft used to call it the Destiny Cloud Fist build. But the truth and fact of the matter is that there are a lot of different variations to this. And the counter is all the same in essence, is having all of your stuff at the front to hold this. Because one of the worst things that can happen to you is that you think a Banshee's coming, you have everything even evenly spread out between bases, and you might be saying, well Wiley, he has all of his stalkers up here and he's building cannons. Well, no, no, no. This observer in the Mothership Corps is actually essential to defending anything. Except Banshee. What do I mean by that? 
Well, the second observer would tell you when you're about to be attacked and would prevent you from being completely and brazenly caught off guard like we see here. And the Mothership Corps, as everyone watching this video knows, is very badly needed for its overcharge ability, especially when holding these very sharp one base builds from Terran. So the Protoss player has been hoodwinked into seeing a Banshee play, essentially is what was faked because of the tech lab on the starport. And then because that starport was made so brazenly at the front of the front door as part of a wall-in, the Protoss player was ba basically bound to see it. There was no way the Protoss could miss this because he was going to try to follow up Scout after seeing double gas because that's what he should have done. And then Savage would in terms of information that could be displayed at his front door, just showed a naked barracks and a starport. So this just screams Banshee. But he did a build that essentially is the opposite of Banshee, and the counter for this build, the Cyclone Marine Raven, sort of crazy mix all in, is completely different from the Banshee counter. So this is what you should aim to do in StarCraft, is deceive your opponent, to make a certain unit composition or do a certain thing, behave in a certain way, position your units, their units in a certain way, or upgrade or tech into a certain tech tree, and then after intentionally displaying the information that causes them to make that decision, you do another move that essentially counters what they are supposed to do. Now if you want another example of this, the absolutely most extreme example I can make of this, there's a video called Combat X, it's essentially called like Combat X Scouting Major by letting Major scout him, and it's an old Destiny video, and in the video Combat X shows information and then intentionally makes, he uh, I think he shows that he's going Storm and then makes a bunch of, like makes like three Robos, typical abuse of Combat X and tries to go Colossus. And the essence of that is, oh, he's trying to trick Major, his opponent in that game, to go Ghost, which counters the Templar tech, and then of course he goes Colossus, and Major won't have any Vikings. So this is the same concept. You fake the Banshee to make your opponent defend against the Banshee, and then you go for a build that basically requires the Protoss to have all of their stuff ready and attentioned at the front door, which is the opposite of what they'll do if you go Banshee. So at this point, what do we see? He has to be up at this front door defending to hold this base. The Mothership Corps and Observer were in Banshee defense mode. This means that just because I display this information over here, I'm going to incur an almost insurmountable advantage. So the Cyclones have a lot of pop, and the Raven means that I can kill Observers. Now the Raven is so good because A, I have to have a tech lab to build it off of my starport. And my opponent, because it's a tech lab starport, is probably going to think it's Banshee. So the Raven is very good in straight up fights because it has auto turret, which does a lot of damage, point defense drone. And it's a detector. If he thinks I'm going Banshee, he's going to have Observers, and I'll be able to snipe the Observers. So the Banshee, again, is a beautiful, beautiful choice because it is so good against everything that my opponent is going to be building to guard against the Banshee play. Auto turret. You always want to use the auto turret in range of their buildings because you want them to be able to have to fight into it. I'm going to briefly pause here. Whenever they pull probes to fight you, it's imperative that you don't stand still and take damage. So you have to click away with move command briefly and then A move. This is called stutter step micro. Very basic for I'm sure most people watching this, but it is crucial when you're doing these one base builds, even if it looks like you're going to win outright. Don't get lazy. Do the kiting. The cyclone rate of fire is very high, but if they get surrounded, you can run into some troubles. Also, it's worth noting that whenever you're kiting, whenever you do one base all ends and you're in someone else's main, be careful whenever you're clicking away, like if I'm right clicking right here in this spot like we see that I am, if I click just up here up top, my units, which are very close to overcharge and his stalkers, will derp out, try to travel down here through the ramp, and I'll take severe damage. 
So the point of what I'm saying is whenever you're kiting in situations like this, you have to be very diligent about right clicking onto the high ground. Because if you right click onto the low ground for your move command, your units instead of going directly north, they'll derp out and go to the northeast or directly east. And here we he here we have the Viking that I made. And the Viking's pretty cute because it can pressure the mothership core, but in truth I was kind of worried about him going Oracle. So the Viking is just a nice little thing to make sure that the Oracle, if it comes in a bit late, won't kill you. And it also pressures the mothership core. I land a mule here. This is a nice mule because it doubles as a manor mule and a repair mule. So what do we see here? His natural's gone. And that's one big thing whenever you all in your opponent is, especially whenever you do like Zerg all in, so sometimes it looks like they've taken a lot of damage, but if they retain their natural, you can run into trouble. The great thing about all of this Banshee displaying is that it allows me to get such a foothold at the natural that there's no way he can hold it. And once you cripple your opponent down to one base, beating them is significantly easier. And that might be obvious, but so frequently with aggressive builds, you can do damage to the natural, make them vacate, but then you push into the main before you kill it. The Cyclones do damage so quickly, that's not the case. So I know I've spoken a lot in depth this game, but now, very briefly, we're going to take a look at the everyone vision throughout the game. Well, let's just see what I did as Terran to try to deceive him. So it's your standard double gas opener. And of course, I make a tech lab so I can do the Banshee swap. But here's the crux of the issue. I wanted to go proxy cyclones this game. Now, I know that a lot of Protoss players like to probe scout. So the very common thing to do for proxy cyclones is proxy barracks and then factory and then reactor and then the swap -aroo. Most people know that. But the crux of the issue here is that I don't want my opponent to know I'm proxying Cyclones. So I have to think, what's the best way to get around this? Now I thought to myself, I'm pretty sure that this guy is going to Probe Scout because almost every one of my ladder games do. But I still want to do the proxy Barracks with proxy Factory because I want to do the Reactored Swap. So. I went ahead and built a barracks in my main and just made the one marine with to deny scouting with the fast wall in. Now that's another thing that is very important that you need to replicate whenever you do stuff like this, is you have the fast wall in. Because you have to be able to deny scouting info. If he if you don't fast wall in or you don't wall in at all, you just lose because he walks around with the probe, walks in with the adept and he sees everything. Remember, you're intentionally giving someone information to deceive them, and then you're hoping that they react in the appropriate way so you can then beat them with your follow-up maneuver. So, that being said, yeah, I made a barracks in my main before I proxied one. And that is just to show, well, I'm not getting pure cyclone rushed. Now the difference between the normal proxied barracks cyclone build that we see a lot and what I did is the one barracks in the main with marine allowed me to also make a tech lab and then fake this banshee. So here's what a lot of Terrans do. I want to cheese Protoss with cyclones. I'll just proxy my barracks, proxy my factory, make a reactor and kill them that way. Now this is strong and can be difficult for Protoss to deal with but if they're diligent and they scout, they know it's coming. And cheese is always strongest whenever your opponent doesn't know it's coming. So I made this build as a nice little variation on the proxied cyclone build because essentially you just display fake information to your opponent and you have them going the whole time. They think, okay, uh, barracks, double gas, that's kind of weird. Oh, okay, it's Banshee. That's okay, he's going Banshee, okay. Well, whatever. All right, I'll just defend against Banshee. But in reality, you're going for a quite brutal Cyclone push. And of course, as I've been saying, the responses are completely different. So to review the core concepts of this video, show your opponent information that makes them react in a way that is advantageous to you, and then hit them in the mouth with the actual 
build or a strategy that you want to do. Now, a lot of people might say, oh, you know, this is, a, this is like a one base build, this is a cheese or whatever. The reason that I chose this replay is because it very easily and basically, and quite frankly, quite frankly, accurately, displays the core concepts of what I'm getting at. Now, I could have chosen like a macro game where I acted like I was going to go Colossi and went super hard into Storm, but there's a lot of moving pieces in games like that. And I really wanted to show this at a very basic level. You show your opponent information, and then you hit them when they least expect it. Of course, my opponent actually played pretty well. He made all of the right decisions in terms of, okay, I think it's Banshee. But that is exactly what I wanted him to do. The only thing that I would say here is that if you're going to do this and your opponent's scouting you, you can fire up a research on this te tech lab and it will even more convincingly look like a banshee. Whenever my opponent scouted me with Adept, I didn't have 150 gas for cloak. But what a lot of people do is they just get the medevac speed boost upgrade because it's 100 100 and research looks like research. But the thing is, is a tech lab starport just screams Banshee. And if someone sees a Tech Lab Starport, they're not gonna go, oh, he's doing he's doing a Raven all in. Especially after you do a lift. That's an I know this is a very long video and I'm getting into a lot of detail, but I really want the new players especially to understand why these decisions are being made. Notice I made a turret in my mineral line to protect against potential Stargate. So a 1-1-1 build, like a a, a, a 16 marine two or three tank, Raven all in, Destiny Cloudfist type build. Whenever people do those builds, they have reactored marines, reactored barracks marines, and they have a factory with a tech lab. Whenever people do Banshee builds, they almost always do swaps, add-on swaps. So that's another piece of information that my opponent was able to read this game that actually contributed to him losing. So guys, if this was helpful in any way, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and I have my social media stuff and a Patreon link down in the description. And I know this was really long-winded, but I had to get into a lot of detail because I feel like this is a really important concept and one that can be applied almost across the board in RTS. Have a good one.